Welcome to Lecture 10 of the Wireless Communication course at Chalmers University of Technology. My name is Henk Weemers. In this lecture, we'll cover parts of Chapter 10 of the book Wireless Communication by Andrea Goldschmidt. Today's learning outcomes include the description of SIMO, SISO, MISO and MIMO transmission, the mathematical formulation of the narrowband MIMO uh, channel model, the use of different detectors such as maximum likelihood, zero forcing and MMSE. Exploitation of channel state information of the transmitter using water filling and parallel decomposition. And the ability to beamform. Last time we talked about multi-user communication. We saw that different users can share the same channel so their communication should be coordinated in time and frequency. There are two types of systems, cellular systems, for which there are base stations and central coordination, and ad hoc systems for which there is no central coordination. In cellular communication, we saw that there is communication from the base station to the mobile, this is called a downlink, and communication from the mobile to the base station, this is called uplink. Typically, there is no direct communication between the mobile stations. In cellular communication, the plane will comprise of many cells. Each cell is associated with a base station, and when a user goes through the environment, it will be associated with different base stations at different times. This is called handover, when a user goes from one base station to another base station. We covered the difference between duplexing and multiple access. Duplexing is a way to create different channels for uplink and downlink. We saw frequency division duplexing and time division duplexing. In frequency division duplexing, uplink and downlink have separate frequencies, while in time division duplexing, uplink and downlink occur at separate time slots. Given a certain duplexing scheme, we then consider multiple access, which is the sharing of the resources in uplink or downlink. We saw the differences, differences between TDMA, FDMA and CDMA. We did not discuss SDMA, this will come later in the next lecture. TDMA stands for time division multiple axis, FDMA for frequency division multiple axis, CDMA for co-division multiple axis. SDMA will stand for space division multiple axis. We used a unified mathematical model for the signals for TDMA, FDMA and CDMA. For the downlink, the base station wants to send separate signals to each of the users. The signal intended for user k is denoted by x k of t, and the base station sends the sum of all of those signals to each of the users. The users then apply a user-specific match filter to recover their own data. In the uplink, each user sends its own signal x of t to the base station. The base station receives the superposition of those signals each with their own channel, where a channel in the simplest case is just a complex number and a delay. And then the base station performs processing in order to recover all of the data for all of the users. We now turn to the topic for this lecture, MIMO communication. So far we've mainly covered SISO communication, single input, single output, sending from a single transmit antenna via a channel to a single receive antenna. A simple variation is SIMO. In SIMO there is a single transmit antenna, but two receive antennas. If the two receive antennas are placed at least a half a wavelength apart, we will automatically have diversity gain and array gain. Diversity gain because the two signals seen go through independent channels, and array gain because with multiple receive antennas we capture more SNR. There's also the opposite configuration called MISO, multiple input, single output. In this case, we have multiple transmit antennas and a single receive antenna. Typically, the more transmit antennas we have, we would divide the power to be constant overall, so the power per transmit antenna would be smaller with more antennas. If we have channel state information at the transmitter, we will see in this lecture that we can pre-code the signal to provide diversity gain at the receiver. 
if we have only channel state information at the receiver, it is also possible to have diversity gain using something called space-time coding. And finally, there's the general, general MIMO case, where we have multiple transmit and multiple receive antennas with the channel in between. The power is divided among the transmit antennas, but we can still have diversity gain because we have independent propagation paths, and we still have array gain because with more receive antennas, we can capture more SNR. The general channel between any transmit and receive antenna, for instance, H21 from transmit antenna 2 to receive antenna 1, can be a time varying frequency selective channel. We will thus first study a more simple channel, namely the narrow band MIMO channel. In this case, the, the channel between any transmit and any receive antenna is just a scalar. So the channel between transmit antenna 1 and receive antenna 1 is just H11, a complex number. In general, the channel between transmit antenna I and receive antenna J is denoted HIJ, again a complex number. We have MR receive antennas and MT transmit antennas. We can stack the observations across the receive antennas into a vector, here written from Y1 to YMR. We can stack the transmitted signals into a vector of length MT and the noise into a vector of length MR. This is the noise on each of the receive antennas. We can then re relate these vectors through a matrix of dimension MR by MT containing all these complex numbers that capture the channel. We see, for instance, that Y1 is the sum of X1 times H11, so this is the, the signal sent via this link, plus X2 times the channel H12, so that will be the signal sent over this link, and so forth. So Y1 is a superposition of many different signals coming from the different transmit antennas. We can write this in a more compact vector matrix notation. Here Y is the vector of observations, X is the vector of transmitted signals, and H is the channel matrix. N is the vector of noises. We now need to define statistical models for the channel, the input, and the noise. First, the input. We want that the input power the power in X, does not increase with the number of transmit antennas. We can do this by forcing the norm of the vector X to be constant, to some value rho. The noise is zero mean Gaussian. The noise will be white in time. It will also be white in space. That means the noise is independent antenna per antenna. Hence, the noise covariance matrix will be an identity matrix. In general, here, we would have a multiplier with n naught. We actually remove this multiplier and put it as part of rho. This allows us to write just an identity matrix for the noise covariance. For the channel, we will assume a Rayleigh fading model so that the channel matrix is populated, populated with IID complex Gaussian entries, zero mean variance one. This allows us to have a single, single and simple SNR measure, namely rho. Rho is the SNR of this system. Now that we have defined the narrow band channel model, we can look at detectors to receive, to recover X from Y. Here we need to consider two different categories, based on the channel state information availability. Most systems have channel state information available at the receiver, because a receiver will first have access to pilot signals from which you can estimate the channel and then does data demodulation. In some cases, there's also channel state information available at the transmitter, for instance, when there's a feedback channel from the receiver to the transmitter, or when we operate in TDD mode, time division duplexing. In this course, we will focus almost exclusively on narrowband MIMO. However, it is important to bear in mind that almost all practical MIMO systems operate in a wideband regime. This is because when the bandwidth is sufficiently large, the channels between any transmit and a receive antenna will appear as dispersive. To deal with this, we can combine MIMO with OFDM. We do this by connecting an OFDM transmitter to each transmit antenna, an OFDM receiver to each receive antenna, and then processing signals across the different antennas. It turns out that then for any subcarrier K, we will have an observation that is now a vector observation, depending on the number of receive antennas, which is itself a narrowband fading MIMO model. So by using MIMO OFDM, we turn the MIMO 
wideband channel into many parallel narrowband MIMO channels. For this reason, we focus only on the narrowband MIMO case. Now we look into how, how to perform detection for channel state information at the receiver. So in this case, the transmitter does not know the channel, only the receiver does. So the transmitter just sends a vector of, say, QAM symbols, and the receiver observes Y. The goal of the receiver is to try to estimate X from Y. The receiver is assumed to know the channel. That's why we have channel state information at the receiver. The optimal thing to do is use maximum likelihood. In the maximum likelihood, we find the best possible x by maximizing the likelihood over all possible x's. Since the noise is Gaussian, this is equivalent to minimizing the Euclidean distance between the observation and h times x over all possible x. The problem is that this has a very high complexity. Especially with many transmit antennas, there are many possible x's to search over. An alternative technique would be to use zero forcing. Zero forcing requires that the number of receive antennas is not less than the number of transmit antennas. What we do is we simply apply the pseudo inverse of the channel to Y. It is then easy to see that by doing this we recover X plus a new kind of noise. The problem with this noise is that it can grow very large when this inverse leads to very high values, which can happen when H Hermitian H is almost singular. That's the downside. On the upside, we now know that each entry here, let's say Z1, is equal to X1 plus W1. Z2 is equal to X2 plus W2 and so forth. So what we can do is just perform detection element per element. In order to avoid this noise enhancement, there is a trade-off which is achieved by a minimum mean square error equalizer. The minimum mean square error equalizer basically assumes that X is Gaussian and then forms an MMSE estimate. This MMSE estimate looks as follows. This MMSE estimate is basically the same as the zero forcing with an additional regularization term that depends on the SNR. When the SNR goes to infinity, MMSE reverts back to zero forcing. So in MMSE, we don't recover X plus noise exactly, but we recover approximately X, and now the noise will typically be much better conditioned. So again, zero forcing in MMSE, after you have computed Z, it's easy to recover the individual entries of X. And for the MMSE detector, in order to derive it, you need a Gaussian approximation for X. This figure here shows the performance of these different detection methods as a function of SNR. These results are taken from this paper for a 4x4 MIMO system. We see that zero forcing, so again, x axis is SNR, y axis is symbol error rate, zero forcing does quite poorly, maximum likelihood does very well, and MMSE operates relatively close to maximum likelihood. When channel state information is also available at the transmitter, we can do more sophisticated things. For this, it is good to look at different matrix decomposition techniques, because after all, the channel matrix is a matrix. In particular here, we will use one tool called the singular value decomposition. We know from the first lecture where we saw the singular value decomposition that any matrix, so also H, the channel matrix, can be decomposed into three matrices. First of all, U, an MR by MR unitary matrix, V is an MT by MT unitary matrix, and sigma is an MR by MT diagonal matrix of a certain rank, RH. This rank is always less than the minimum of the number of receive and transmit antennas. Equality is obtained in a so-called rich scattering environment, such as a Rayleigh fading environment. On the other hand, with a line of sight channel between transmitter and receiver, typically the rank will be very small, maybe only one. We can now use the singular value decomposition in the following way. This is our standard MIMO communication scheme, input X, channel H, output Y. Instead of calling X our QAM symbols, we'll actually call this transformed symbols. Our actual QAM data symbols we call X tilde. Before transmitting those, we first apply a precoding. So X is V times X tilde. 
We then send x over the channel. We receive y. At the receiver, we'll apply a shaping matrix U Hermitian. We call the resulting observation y tilde. So why do we do this? Clearly, y tilde can be written as a function of x tilde through a linear relationship, namely U Hermitian h v x tilde plus noise. We also know that h can be written as a singular value decomposition as u, sigma, v Hermitian. Now, since u and v are unitary matrices, these cancel out and these cancel out. So in the end, y tilde is sigma times x tilde plus noise, where sigma is a diagonal matrix. So we've essentially created rh parallel channels. This is because y tilde 1 is the first diagonal entry in sigma times x tilde 1 plus noise. y tilde 2 is the second diagonal entry times x tilde 2 plus noise. So the properties of this technique is that you create RH parallel channels. This also means that when RH is less than MT, that we don't send any data on those remaining available dimensions. This means that while x is of length MT, x tilde should be of length mt minus rh. If we make xt, x tilde longer than rh, then some of the x tilde entries will not be seen by the receiver, because the sigma corresponding sigma entries are zero. Noise properties are not affected, because we apply unitary transformations. Because now we have parallel channels, we can combine this with rate and power adaptation using water filling. Finally, the detector is very simple because we can apply parallel detectors for each of the parallel channels. This means we avoid the exponential complexity of maximum likelihood. Since many students struggle the first time they see MIMO SVD, we here provide a little bit of MATLAB code. Let's suppose we have empty transmit antennas, MR receive antennas, and nine spatial streams. We want to make sure that the number of spatial streams is correct, so it should be less than the minimum of MT and MR. We have a noise variance of 0.1. We generate a channel, just standard really fading, independent Gaussian entries across all the dimensions. We then apply an SVD. At the transmitter, we first generate our data, x tilde. So in this case, this will generate uh, QPSK data. We then have our precoding matrix, which comprises only part of the V matrix related to the number of streams. We apply the precoding matrix to X tilde to find the transmitted sequence X. We generate our observation by applying XTR to the channel and adding noise. Finally, we apply a shaping matrix of appropriate dimension and we compute y tilde. y tilde is a shaping matrix times y. So you can play around with this code in MATLAB and then you can compare y tilde with x tilde. What you will see is that y tilde will be a scaled version of x tilde where the scaling factors depends on s. You will also see that when the matrix has a very low rank, then maybe not all of the nine streams can be supported because some of the entries in S will be very close to zero. So I, I recommend that you play around with this code. The technique of the singular value decomposition can be used for many things. We can create parallel channels and do water filling for aggressive high rate transmission. We can also use it when we have a very unreliable channel, in which case we would only send a single data stream from transmitter to receiver using many channel, using many uh, antennas. So let's suppose we want to transmit a single number x, but we will use empty transmit and MR receive antennas to send this signal to the receiver. So we can apply a precoding matrix here or a precoding vector to this x to obtain a vector of transmitted signals x1 through xmt. And similar at the receiver, we multiply with this vector u star to obtain an observation y. So here x and y are scalars. So mathematically, we'll have the following relationship. A scalar x multiplied by a vector v 
multiplied by the channel and another vector u Hermitian. Gives us our scalar output with scalar noise. We can now choose u and v to correspond to the largest i to the largest singular value, so the largest entry in sigma. This allows you to send the data in one of those many parallel streams, but the one that has the highest SNR. So you're using this channel in the best possible way. This leads to a high diversity but low rate communication because you're not using all the spatial streams that you have available. Note that we can use this beamforming with many transmit antennas, many receive antennas, and we will use all of those transmit antennas and all of those receive antennas to send a single complex number. So this is not the same as just taking X and sending it over the best um, channel to the best receiver. We're actually using the whole channel, all of the MIMO capabilities in order to do this. Finally, I want to end with one slide on the capacity of the MIMO channel in preparation for the next lecture. This is our narrowband model as before. We saw that X is constrained to have a certain energy. We now make things a little bit more sophisticated where we also consider the correlation structure, the covariance structure in X. So we see X has a certain covariance matrix. Now, in order to meet our SNR constraint, the trace of our X will be rho. So this is the energy in X itself. And the noise is zero mean Gaussian white in space and time with an identity covariance matrix. In the channel, we can do our SVD as before, and we will have sigma, sigma, a sigma matrix, which comprises the singular values. RH are all the non-zero singular values, and then the rest are the zero singular values. Here we assume that the singular values are ordered from large to small, as is done in MATLAB. You can show that the capacity of this MIMO channel for a fixed channel matrix H is given by this expression. So this is reminiscent of the channel capacity of the SISO channel with some modifications. So we have a determinant because we work with a matrix system. We have the channel matrix and the input covariance. We have an identity matrix related to the number of receive antennas. And we maximize over all possible covariance matrices that satisfy the total energy constraint. So this is how we find the capacity. When we only have one transmit and one receive antenna, we find the traditional capacity equation for the SISO channel. Now we can break, break this capacity up into two ways. The first one is when we have only channel state information at the receiver, but not at the transmitter. When the transmitter does not know what the channel is, the best it can do is spread all of its power across all of the transmit antennas, because it has no more information. In that case, the covariance matrix would just be rho over mt times an identity matrix. Okay, so we have empty parallel streams, each with energy rho over mt. We can then substitute this in this expression, and we find the following capacity result. Here there are some steps missing, which involve doing a singular value decomposition on H, but it is relatively straightforward to come to this expression. On the other hand, if the channel is known at the transmitter, we can do our singular value decomposition and exploit this when we're doing uh, power allocation. And then we can do water filling over parallel channels. So in that case, the capacity will have this expression. We have the log one plus SNR of each of the channels, where now we can play around with these row values. So this is the SNR we allocate for each channel I. Of course, the sum of these uh, transmit power should be equal to the total transmit power. As a special case, I invite you to look into the question, what is the capacity for beamforming? In order to achieve this capacity, you need sophisticated coding, coding schemes across space and time. So here we consider the channel to be static and narrowband. When a channel is fading, then there will be random. There are different notions of capacity, namely average capacity, where you average over many channel realizations, or outage capacity, which is the probability that a channel gives you capacity lower than some threshold. 
Let's revisit the learning outcomes. You should be able to describe the differences between SIMO, SISO, MISO, and LIMO. Express mathematically the narrowband MIMO model. Use different detectors and describe their properties. Perform parallel decomposition of a MIMO channel using singular value decomposition and also be able to combine it with water filling. You should also be able to uh, perform beamforming.